Welcome to the March 3rd, 2021 Advance Report for McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman and President McGowan Group Asset Management with your fast-paced tour of the global financial markets and the trends that we see emerging this year, obviously much different than last year. I'm going to start this week with a Dow three-year chart. Why did I choose three years? It has to do with earnings. Go back here. The Dow hit 27,000 back in 2018 when the earnings are not that much different from today. The earnings this quarter are only about 5% over that. Of course, they had a downdraft. But the Dow itself is up 25%. Some of that is because interest rates are zero, stocks are more attractive because they have dividends, many of them. And, but the 25% I would call into question because you've got corporate taxes likely to go from 21% to 28%. And if they do that, the earnings go down 10% and would end up below 2018 levels. That could set the stage for the next pullback as that's discussed later this year. The pandemic took the Dow to 18, that was 27,000, and the current just under 34,000. This is how much the economy actually produces. You hear, oh, GDP was up 6% or GDP was this. They're taking the percentage change from the year prior and multiplying it times four. Makes it seem like a really big number, like the GDP was down 33%. Well, a third of the economy wasn't gone last year. We briefly had the shutdown. What was the real impact? Now, this is the production in the U.S., the economic activity by quarter. You can see right here about five it's, a, it's actually about 5.4 trillion in the most recent quarter, just below 5.4 trillion. You could see it went down to uh, 5.1 trillion in 2019, down to well below 5 trillion here. But when you look at this graph on the actual dollars, the changes are not near as dramatic as the result. But the message we draw from this, the economy is still not as good as it was pre-pandemic. It's a lot better than the first quarter of 2019, by the way. And it says, okay, we've got recovery, but it's not a record yet. Of course, the indexes are. So what do we do about it? Some of it is we look at the earnings. These are the earnings I mentioned back in 2018, $40 per S&P unit after tax. And it went all the way down to below 25 in the pandemic. This quarter, positive surprises. That's what we saw all week long. Companies beating expectations on both revenue gains and profit gains almost across the board. And it brought this to a record $42.5 per quarter per unit. Now, take the taxes out. If you increase the taxes, that number goes back to about right here, say 37 and a half uh, if they do that. So that's one thing to watch is when does that actually happen and are earnings gonna be that good? But this quarter was a blowout way ahead of expectations. We, this was not in this chart last time we checked it, this full recovery to record profits. Now uh, what's this? We're gonna go through some year to date performances that give us guidance. Energy is top performing sector this year in the S&P 500. This is the pipeline, energy pipeline index, oil and gas. It is a 36% total return since the start of the year. Of course, it was one of the worst performers last year. That has reversed, oil hit 65 this week. There are projections as high as 80, and the supply glut has been essentially used up or will be in the next few months, and you may end up with some shortages there. So that's one sector with high dividends. Here, this is a longer term treasury total return. So we're going back to the three year mark and with the drop in interest rates back to zero and everybody buying treasuries, this has a total return with interest of about 7%. But look at this, since we started this year, boom, a big downdraft in the value of long treasuries. That's the danger 
when we see interest rate spikes. Well, we saw the interest rate spike this year. That's the recovery underway. Treasury is not as attractive when you're not in an absolute panic. What's doing relatively well in fixed income so far this year? This is the high yield corporate bond index and it's actually flat for the year but positive total return. It's actually slightly positive for the year and it, it pays about a 5% yield. It's just under a 6% average return for this period with interest reinvested. And that has demonstrated so far this year, it's a better solution than the 12% drop in the value of a long treasury. So fixed income, investment grade is underperforming, high yield is outperforming because the expected defaults did not materialize. There may be a point to liquidate that part of the portfolio and we've got a gradual harvest plan on the global high yield. Now, what's this? This is clean technology year to date. It had a huge run up. The index went threefold over the period before this in about 18 months, it went to 34, all the way to 21, now it's 23. The delay in the infrastructure bill corresponds to that. In other words, there's a lot of arguing and only 20% goes to ener in, uh, energy infrastructure. And will the clean technologies be able to sustain those multiples? We like all forms of energy as long as the company makes money and can grow. And that's something that we, we keep an eye on. Did this correct by enough? For some companies, maybe, but we want to wait and see. This is the healthcare index, which resumed its rally amidst good earnings reports, great revenue growth. Some of the companies pay a great dividend and are about half of the price of the S&P 500. Now we'll cover financials. This is the financial sector. Why would the financial sector be up so much you know, on, on this year-to-date basis? Well, what's happened in the financial sector, and this is an interesting point, the financial sector expected lots of defaults in the pandemic. They didn't materialize. The Fed pumped in lots of money and there was plenty of money. So most companies did not default. Most individuals did not default. They get to pull that money back to earnings. That's what's happening with financials. We like the business development companies because they pay better dividends. They're private, so they're not as much government controlled. And that category, obviously doing very well this year. So that's this week's update. Be sure to subscribe to YouTube McGowan Group. It'll be great for your kids because it helps take the kids, the non-investing spouse, to the next level in understanding. Our goal is to help you make great decisions and to further the education and your confidence in the ability to evolve portfolios. To come see the McGowan Group, McGowan Group Asset Management, based in the Crescent in Dallas. We've been here over 20 years. You can come down and meet the team that cares or schedule your Zoom meeting by going to networthradio.com. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel. I'm Spencer McGowan, President McGowan Group, your financial weatherman. We sponsor each week NetworthRadio.com broadcast. That has the charts and graphs, many of which you saw today. We also sponsor this YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe for fast-breaking news, an alert when we post something in a market condition that may have changed. Our goal is to help you as an investor make the right decisions at the right time. And that's part of what this YouTube channel is about as well as NetWorthRadio.com. I am well served with a team of 10 people including myself and that team that cares is actually made up of people who devoted to your net profits and your success as well as excellence in service. If you want an educational experience to follow this up, get to NetWorthRadio.com, TheMcGowanGroup.com. Right here, we disclose our net client experience all the way back to 2001. What that includes, the bear market cycles of 02, 08, 2018, and the recoveries through the most recent quarter. That is true education of investors and exactly how our clients have done disclosed right here. Further disclosures, value at risk of loss. Yes, 
investments are going to fluctuate. That's part of the reason for this broadcast and that can actually work to your advantage. We'll build that into your plan. So I urge you to go to NetworthRadio.com, fill out the preliminary client questionnaire, a free one hour brainstorming session by phone or at the Crescent in Dallas, and we will map out a multi-year plan for you and your family that's appropriate. Just because we talk about a security on this broadcast or any securities doesn't make it a recommendation for your portfolio until you have that written plan. Thank you for tuning in today and we'll be back next week as your financial weatherman.